This is Harwich, a small seaside town on the upper edges of Essex that is currently home to around 17,000 people. With a rich shipyard building and tourism history, Harwich once boasted a booming port that fueled a small but efficient local economy. But following years of decline in industry and austerity, the town has become a relic of its former self, leaving it as a prime example of modern day poverty in British seaside towns. I've come to Harwich in an attempt to discover how a once successful seaside town, like many others throughout Britain, has become so affected by poverty. After arriving at the ironically named Harwich International train station, I was met by an eerily scene as its platforms lay entirely empty. I soon found out that only one train arrives in Harwich per hour. My first port of call was the Harwich and District Community Food Bank, which situated around 10 minutes out of town is found in the modest setting of the supermarket car park. One of the food bank's volunteers, Jeff Smith, who is also a labour councillor in the area, agreed to show me through the process that a visitor would undergo when seeking food parcels. To start off with, obviously the people come through into the reception area, uh, they give their names to the receptionist, and then after a few minutes they're given time to come through into the, the interview room. They'll spend sort of five or ten minutes going through all of the uh, reasons why they need to use the food bank. Um, obviously there are reasons that, uh, you know, with their benefits, what, um, what, what benefits they're receiving, JSA, ESA, income support. Um, they give them, having to give their ID, name and everything, and um, they will be interviewed and discuss their, their financial situation. So the interview will then take um, uh, basically a little um, ticket through to the through to the storeroom, which is around here. And into the storeroom, we've uh, got a list of all the items that we provide, um, and then, like I say, depend on the amount of adults and children that they're, they're, they're needed for. They get the bags, and within five minutes, they're you know, all got all of their stuff, and they're uh, they're out. Harwich's problems are common throughout Britain's coastlines, with a 2013 report by the Centre for Social Justice finding that seven out of its most deprived areas were seaside towns. The gradual decline of Harwich's shipping industry was something that Les Nicol felt important to highlight when I met up with him at his work in Harwich Fire Station. Yeah, that's tidy. My name's Les Nicol and I'm a community builder for Essex Fire and Rescue Service. At present, I chair the local food bank. Over the last 12 months, if we take 2015 to 2016, we increased the people using our food bank by over 100%. There was plenty of work. There were two or three factories providing lots and lots of work in the town. Very active factories, a really good community, a, hot, a bubbling community, lots of shops in our high street. We had a thriving port at the time you know, both a ferry port and a, a port bringing in and out goods into the country. And the, so there was quite a lot of work. And then sadly, the recessions of the 70s and the 80s came in and things began to take a turn for the worse. One by one, the factories were closing down, the major employers were cutting back, the ports were cutting back. And without the infrastructure or the, or the transport schemes to get away from town to find work, what happens then is the town slowly but surely died. Les was keen to discuss one of his initiatives known as Winter Warmers, which held over the course of a week, recently gave away over 3,600 items of clothing and household essentials to local people in need. I've still got some clearing up to do, I'm afraid, from the Winter Warmers, but uh, some of the racks. But this is the room here that we use. This is our... Our community room. It used to be our breathing apparatus chamber. So when I was a young firefighter at the fire station here, we had tunnels in here that, that were all made up of crate tunnels. And you would come in, it'd all be black. The windows, there wasn't any windows. They were like um, asbestos windows. So it'd be completely black. We'd fill it with smoke. Winter warmers revolves us looking to around really to our friends and colleagues, workmates, anybody that we know, acquaintances, asking them if they've got it to donate clothing, to donate footwear, to donate bedding, to donate towels, to donate household items, anything that they don't need that will keep people warm. And then what we do is we set up a pop-up shop 
and we set it up just like a charity shop and then we invite people to come in and when they come in they're given a cup of tea or coffee and biscuits they're welcome through the door they're treated like honored and trusted customers and they're asked to look around that shop and if they see things that they want if they see things that they need if they see things that fit they're told to take them take as much as they want completely free of charge and over this one week we had in january this year over 300 and 60 people came into the shop and they took away more than 3,600 items that they needed. Out here, this is the winter warmer shop. So this would be outside. We, we, we used a little covered passageway. And then if we take it on a step to this picture, for this week, we set it up, as you can see, it's set up as a shop. People here are choosing this lady here, bless us, come along. And I think she's got some bedding and some clothing there for her children and herself. There's a massive problem. There's a massive lack of opportunity for people in our town. Lots of people have tried to address it and make it work, but up to now we've had no success. And it's not getting better. Sadly, it's getting worse. I was off to find one of the food bank's familiar faces, Philip Bloomfield, near his house in the historic Old Harwich district. However, I first enlisted the help of his friend and neighbour Wayne to show me around the area, which has become known as one of the town's poorest quarters. How's Phil been doing then? Ah, oh, he's doing all right. He's going back downhill again. Phil! That means he's not in. But this is where originally they sent people to da, 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 Australia, I believe it was. And you got all the pictures on here. Because they sent um, English convicts yeah. to Australia. And it's all they've painted it along here bits and pieces but they're building a replica boat yeah they're building a complete bit while Wayne had meant to say America rather than Australia walking around with him gave a real sense of the problems faced in Harwich no he's not there, not there no. no that means he's all the way up town after almost an hour of searching, we decide to try again at a later time. I was heading back to meet Jeff along Harwich's scenic beachfront. Jeff has been a local councillor in the area for over two years, during which he has taken time out of his work to volunteer for the food bank. I've been down at the food bank since July. When I'm down there, I'll sort of like uh, sit into the interviews and sometimes I'm on the front desk on reception, just basically taking people's names as they come in. I'll be totally honest, uh, it's opened my eyes to the situation that we have got down in Harwich. Um, and it's affected right across the board. Young, middle-aged, uh, pensioners are being affected as well. Uh, living off, they're just, you know, some of them have only got their basic pension to live off. Um, which obviously isn't a great deal. On our way back to the food bank, Jeff received a phone call about a single mother of four who had just been hit by the news of her benefits being sanctioned. Uh, while you were in the car, you heard I got a phone call um, about a lady who's had her benefits stopped. Um, got four children and basically they're in a situation where they've got no food to last them over the weekend. So we came back to the food bank and we've uh, arranged a parcel for them and we'll go and be dropping that off now. Right. Sorry. Jeff received this phone call just minutes before the food bank was due to close, which would have left the single mother of four without any food during that period. Well, the lady said that um, her benefits have been stopped and uh, she's in a situation where she's going to have to deal, deal with it all and they're not really giving her much help at all. Um, Unfortunately, she wasn't even aware that 
the food bank was down at the, uh, you know, the Morrison's car park. She still thought I was in the Salvation Army. Back on Old Harwich, there was still no sign of Phil. However, accompanied by one of the food bank's volunteers, Sari Barker, I decided to meet up again with Wayne after being told about his worsening benefit situation. The situation at the moment is uh, my friend, Mr Philip Bloomfield, has actually had his money stopped on more than one occasion and he's been sanctioned for over about the last eight weeks. Has actually had his money stopped on more than one occasion and they dropped him down to £21 a fortnight and then down to 31 after I spoke with them to try and explain the situation that he's not a well man and this is the man here. I've just been down, down to yours. Been waiting for you, I told you not to go out. I've this, been knocking on your is, door. This is Mr Bloomfield. I've been knocking on your door. Right. I can't even remember drinking that one. Yeah. And so at the moment you're living on how much a fortnight? At the moment? Yeah. At the moment I'm, I'm getting £31. What is your income normally then? So, so, um, 170 but I don't know what's going to happen because I had a budget loan. Yeah. And I, I should pay, should be paying ten pound something a week, but obviously I haven't. I don't, so I don't know what's happening there. Right, so that's still accumulating as well. So, so I, I don't know what what's happen, happening there. But they they stopped me stopped me twice. Hundred not pound. Right. Found on in the churchyard as well with a quilt, mm. and she was also found on the beach from that one. Downstairs with electric boxes. It's all damp there. If you go in the hallway when it really rains, you can see, 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 see it all coming off. Right underneath the electric box. Yeah, hey, look. Everywhere, mate. Not only me, next door as well. Mm -hmm. I can't get my key. Too high. Mm. I can't reach, look. <laughs> I can't reach. I never had, when I first moved in, I never, never had no electric for a week. It's what up here. So look. when was the last time you had electricity in the flat? About three weeks ago. Okay. And so that means you can't use your fridge? I had no gas for over a year. So it's been a year since you had gas? So. I've been having strip, strip washes. Yeah. You know? Well, because that would have done the water, would it? Oh, yeah, it does the water, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the red. Well, I don't use the reds. Right, so you haven't had hot water in over a year if you haven't about had that, yeah, gas. that, yeah. Right, yeah? Well, no, bottom. Bottom. Oh, God. Double bag in any case. It's important that the social worker sees it as well. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, yeah. It's really important. I don't know what that black stuff is. Just once it's empty, just... Oh, I'm going to bleach it all. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. what it needs. Oh, definitely, yeah. Because I've had camera go down several times. Yeah. And they come around my bed and said, if I carry on drinking, I've got between eight months to a year to live. Mm. Would you be relieved? Yes. I don't... I get to the stage where I don't, I don't care. That's mm. why. Well, I don't, I, I don't, see, I ain't one for, um, I've always done it on my own. And I was sitting here earlier and I, I was thinking, what purpose have I got in life? December as well, no, they've not started up anywhere since. Right. I caught up with Sari after leaving Phil's house to hear about her own experiences of his situation, which had been common throughout her time at Harwich Food Bank. 
a setup barker and uh, I volunteered at Harridge Food Bank uh, for two and a half years. I just came into contact with Phil um, when we had our um, old premises. He did come to us um, on a regular basis, which you will find, especially now with such severe welfare cuts that people are in crisis permanently. Phil is um, a real example of just how vulnerable single people in particular mm. are because of the welfare cuts. Okay. If you don't have the push of actually having children to feed, you won't go to the food bank, you won't go willingly. And Phil was dealing with, I mean, I've never seen such savage welfare cuts before. He missed an appointment because he was in hospital with a life-threatening illness and um, they reduced um, his welfare payments to £15 a week, I think it was. While the government continues to push forward an argument that benefit sanctioning encourages people to seek employment, many in the town feel that following years of continued industrial decline, the ship for that has long since sealed. Did I fail some kind of unspoken test? Actually, you know what? Fuck it. Don't waste your breath.